All right, in this video, we are gonna talk about medications that are used to treat psychotic disorders. Before we get into specific medications, I do want to do a quick review of the positive and negative symptoms associated with schizophrenia. So when I say positive symptoms, that means that there are things present in the patient who has schizophrenia that should not be there. So this includes like delusions and hallucinations. So patients who suffer from schizophrenia will have these things present they shouldn't be there. Those are the positive symptoms. And then these patients will also have negative symptoms. So they will be lacking in things that should be there. So a patient with schizophrenia, they may have energia, which is lack of energy, or anhedonia, which is lack of pleasure in doing things. They should have those things present, but they are not there. And those are negative symptoms. All right, so let's now talk about typical or first generation antipsychotics, which includes medications such as chlorpromazine, haloperidol, and droperidol. These medications are typically used to help control the positive symptoms associated with schizophrenia, and they work by altering the action of dopamine in the central nervous system. So the way I remember at least one of these medications is that if you have hallucinations, then you may need haloperidol to help control those. So um, they both start with, you know, hallucinations, got that HAL, haloperidol also starts with HAL. So in terms of side effects, there are many, many side effects with this class of medication. And if you look up any one of these drugs in a drug reference guide, you're gonna see a huge laundry list of side effects. So I'm gonna go over some of the key ones here. So with this, um, with typical antipsychotics, extra pyramidal side effects are common. So this includes dystonia, which are involuntary muscle contractions. It also includes Parkinson's type symptoms, such as muscle rigidity and a shuffling gait. It can also include tardive dyskinesia, which includes things like lip smacking and tongue rolling, as well as akathisia, which includes restlessness and pacing. If your patient is having some of these EPS symptoms, you can give them benzotropine to help reduce those symptoms. Another key side effect with typical antipsychotics is neuroleptic malignant syndrome, or NMS. NMS symptoms include fever, blood pressure fluctuations, as well as dysrhythmias and muscle rigidity. If your patient is having NMS symptoms, you can give them dantrolene to help reduce those symptoms. Other side effects with typical antipsychotics include agranulocytosis, which if you recall from some of my previous videos, that decreases the amount of white blood cells a patient has and increases their risk for infection. In addition, anticholinergic side effects are common with this class, which means it's very drying. So if you remember my previous mnemonic, can't see, can't pee, can't spit, and can't poop, and then orthostatic hypotension, seizures, and sedation are possible side effects with this class of medication. All right, now let's talk about second generation or atypical antipsychotic medications. Medications that fall within this class include risperidone, olanzapine, and clozapine. So it's gonna be really important to differentiate clonidine from clozapine. So clonidine is used for hypertension, right? And clozapine is used for schizophrenia, like we're going to talk about here. Clozapine has that Z in the name, in the drug name, and that will help you remember that it's used for schizophrenia, which also has that Z. If it doesn't have that Z, then it's not for schizophrenia. Okay, so this class, these atypical or second generation antipsychotics, they are used to help control both the positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. They act as a serotonin and dopamine antagonist in the body. 
There are a lot of side effects um, with this class of medication as well. Maybe not quite as many as we saw with the typical antipsychotics, but there's a lot of really yucky ones here on this list, which makes it hard for patients to stay on a medication regimen um, when they have schizophrenia because side effects can include diabetes, weight gain, increased cholesterol, as well as sedation, orthostatic hypotension, anticholinergic effects, menorrhagia, decreased libido, and if we're taking clozapine, then that also carries a risk for agranulocytosis, which again, that means that the patient's white blood cell count is gonna come down, which places them at risk for infection. So if your patient is on a second generation or atypical um, antipsychotic medication, you're definitely gonna want to monitor their blood glucose um, during therapy because of that risk for diabetes. And then you're definitely gonna also want to monitor them for infection because of that agranulocytosis risk. Okay, in my next video, we will be finishing up our mental health medications. This includes ADHD medications, medications for alcohol abuse, opioid dependence, as well as smoking cessation. Hang in there with me.